Welcome to this episode of Shonen Flop, where we talk about manga series and Shonen Jump that didn't make it big. I'm David. I'm Jordan. And this week, we're talking about Hunter's Guild, colon, Red Hood, and we are joined by our guest today, Alyssa. Hi, I'm Alyssa Salah. Um, I am a comic creator. I worked on the comic that just came out, Weeaboo, um, by Oni Press. I'm excited to be here. Hell Yeah. So you are our second comic book creator. We were fortunate enough to have Xander Cannon, if you're familiar with him at all, on our previous episode. I will say, I think the quality of what you read this week was a little bit higher than what Xander got to read. Yeah! Lucky me. Yeah, but this series was definitely at least a lot more fun. I don't know about you, Jordan. How do you think this was versus Monster Tamer Girls? This was definitely way more interesting than Monster Tamer Girls. I definitely like this significantly more, and and I'm more likely to go back and read this, whereas Monster Tamer Girls, I mean, nothing really happens in Monster Tamer Girls. Yeah, it's just about cute girls taking care of kaiju, and somehow it's really boring. You'd think that that premise would be super exciting, but no. (laughs) And then, Alyssa, have you read a lot of manga or watched anime? (laughs) <laughs> Since I wrote a book about called Weibo, I would I would hope so. I was just gonna say. <laughs> I don't like to assume. <laughs> I appreciate that, but yeah, I'm a huge um, anime manga fan. I lean more like retro, um, so I like a lot of like nice. um, like Devil Man stuff like that. Um, Rosa Versai. OG Devil Man. When I was a kid, I got into I watched the like <laughs> that like OVA on like VHS or something. <laughs> My friends had it. <laughs> Hell yeah. If it's like a new show coming out, I like wait for people to say if it's good or not, and then I'll watch it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's really awesome. For the record, I actually like almost of never course, watch anime, so that course. I think adds to why I don't assume yeah. that people actively engage in that stuff. I think a lot of people are either anime watchers or manga readers. Like a surprisingly few amount of crossover between the two. <laughs> it's like, why aren't we all just reading it all? I don't know. I'm interesting because uh, I don't read manga or watch anime or watch anything. I mostly just curl into a ball and let myself wallow in my own depression. <laughs> Get it, Jordan. You work in retail. You don't have to flex like this. <laughs> but speaking of wallowing in depression, actually, this is reminding me how my friend's 30th birthday was yesterday, his party. And so I said, congrats on being 30. You're halfway done. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it do be like that. <laughs> you know what else? isn't going to last for a very long time was this series. So why don't we get into the mega details? And yes, I know that's an extremely morbid thing I just said about my friend, but it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. He's never listened to this podcast, so I can be a little, I can bully him a little bit on this show. Oh, it's Lewis? Well, fuck Lewis. Lewis should listen to this fucking podcast. Yeah. Fun fact, I also, for his birthday, got him tickets to see the Eternals, which he forgot his vax card, so he had to go home at the theater and never saw it. So that was a lot of fun. So... From what you've told me of it, though, it sounds like he lucked out. Really, the gift was that he didn't see it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, we already had our transition, so why don't we go into manga details? This series was created by Yuki Kawaguchi, and it was based actually on a one-shot that was also called Hunter's Guild Red Hood, and he's also created works called Kuroshimi no Meryl and Yodokakari no Kuni. This is probably not a surprise in the slightest. Jordan, I forget if we talked about it before, <laughs> or maybe Alyssa, can you take a guess of what really popular Shonen Jump series right now this creator was an assistant for? Well, I'm looking at the notes, so I know. So Alyssa, what do you think it is? Well, I'm already looking at the notes, and I also, um, but as <laughs> The notes were more of a justification in my thoughts because um, I was reading this manga and was like, this guy really either likes My Hero Academia or has worked for um, Horikoshi. Everyone is drawn with that like blocky kind of like big oval mouth like style of My Hero Academia, but like mixed with like, (laughs) I don't know, um, To Your Eternity. The thing I like about uh, this uh, this art style is that, like, from the neck down, everybody looks like they're on, like, a, a heavy metal album cover. And then from the neck up, they look like Scott Pilgrim. <laughs> oh, man. That is true. Debonair, for example, looking at how her, like, these little tiny neck and this, like, circle Scott Pilgrim head on this giant gargantuan body. <laughs> <laughs> Fun fact, this is the second series we've ever covered by an assistant. It's actually the series that started the show. Zipman was also created by another assistant, but it's interesting how they went in different directions where this guy kind of had a much sketchier style. Well, Zipman has this really, really polished style, but both of them, you can tell, are both extremely high effort. This series ran from June 28th, 2021 to November 8th, 2021, making it the most recently canceled series. This actually was the first series we have ever done a 
kind of preview on that ultimately got axed. So that's why yeah. instead we put our chibi scoring up just because, you know, can't really do a first impressions on a series that we had already done one on. And I personally was actually actively reading this. So this is the first cancellation that I was actually disappointed by. Yeah, it was shortly lived with only three volumes and 18 chapters, which puts it just at about the cancel as soon as it can <laughs> club along with, I would say about half the series we cover in this podcast. Is it just me or is it getting like shorter? You know, like Candy Flurry was also like 18 chapters, right? Like, and that was also a very recent, recently axed series. Like we read a lot of older series that are like far lower in quality and they get to like fucking chapter 25 or some shit. And then it just seems like Shonen Jump is just not putting up anything, with anything mm. as much right now just from the chat it seems like shonen jump right now has a really strong block of core series and they really are concerned about what's going to replace them because like dr stone is ending my hero academia and they're like if this can't be our next like yeah. dr stone or my hero academia we're not going to risk running it because there's just not space for series to kind of have like a mediocre hundred chapter run which is hilarious because like they're huge series you know what you got naruto you got dbz you got fucking they're bringing bleach back which is hilarious <laughs> Like, oh, yeah, I remember how Naruto was, like, fucking great for its first 30 chapters entirely, right? Yeah. Hey, man, I liked those 40 chapters of Naruto. <laughs> when he made all those shadow clones, dude. <laughs> no, you're right, I guess. Whatever, whatever. Are you hot take, like, saying that the worst part of Naruto is, like, the best part? Like, everything up to the Chinooing exam was the best part of Naruto. I guess. I guess you're right. Ugh. This guy's like, I love the Great Ugh, Moon War. Whatever. <laughs> I don't even remember the Great Moon War. I guess my point is that, like, for the best, the best parts of Naruto weren't like, oh, they weren't like that great. <laughs> but anyway, totally not. Mark is never going to be on this show now. Cool. So anyway. <laughs> So speaking of plot, why don't we actually get into talking about the manga itself, where Jordan has written a fantastic plot summary. Thank you. The little Russian hamlet of Kasuka has been attacked by werewolves again, and in response, the mayor has reached out to the Hunter's Guild, which has sent a little girl in a red hood named Grimm to fight off the werewolves. Fellow is a young village boy raised by the mayor, who is tasked with showing Grimm around, when the mayor is suddenly eaten by a werewolf, leaving his wife, a sweet old granny, all alone. Velo, however, realizes that the granny is actually the wolf, because it's Little Red Riding Hood. <laughs> and Grimm Grim transforms into a giga, thick, powerful adult woman, oh my god, and together they kill the granny wolf. Soon after, however, two werewolf brothers decide to take her place, but are defeated when Grim literally hands Vero Chekhov's gun, <laughs> which does not have silver bullets, but wolfonium bullets. Mm -hmm. The alpha wolf Lycaon, Lycaon? Lysa Lycaon arrives to the hamlet with his partner, the Ashen Witch, Cinderella, who burns the whole fucking place to ash. Do you get it? No, please explain it to me. <laughs> if there's anything Jordan loves, it's explaining <laughs> things. Shut up. Yeah, Jordan's never gonna live down where Jordan mansplained what an what Xander's own comic meant. <laughs> Whatever. I get why what he was Whatever. doing. I just I just love giving him shit about that. <laughs> yeah, David, you never explain things over and over again and like go into like long diatribe. Whatever, let's go. <laughs> By the way, it wasn't until this boss term where I realized why she was called Cinderella. Oh, see, you needed an explainer. I got the Ashen, but I didn't get the Cinder part. In the original fairy tale, that's why she's called Cinderella. Really? She is so broke that she's like covered in ash and cinders that's good work that's good work see this is when the importance of explaining yeah yeah thank you i never said jordan doesn't use his powers <laughs> for good thank you but he can also use them for uh <laughs> anyway so grim decides to take velo to the headquarters of the hunter's guild to get licensed to take a hunter's exam hmm hunter's exam where have i heard that training for the exam on a train takes place aboard the Ironworks, a big train conducted by the extremely muscular Debonair Diamond, a woman who is even giga thicker than Grimm. Holy shit. Jordan put that all in caps. He was that excited to talk about her. <laughs> After three months of training, Diamond reveals the Hunter's exam is a game of cops and robbers against her and Grimm. There's a bunch of other characters who aren't important other than that. They team up with Velu to win, but oh my God, it turns out the mayor from earlier was alive the whole time and working with the bad guys to seal some kind of book. <sighs> Allison, take us home. <laughs> oh my god. Did you just call her Allison? Oh, sorry, Alyssa, take us home. <laughs> I definitely said Allison, I'm sorry. 
at this point is when I knew that the auditors told them, you're canceled, wrap it up. It's never been so blatantly <laughs> obvious. So by this point, Grimm's character has deteriorated and lost a significant portion of her depth. And Velo's character completely messes up the plot threads of anybody he interacts with, which are all the things stated directly in the series because the fourth wall is about to get broken down. Broken the fuck down. This is some end of Animal Man shit. Yeah! <laughs> that was actually gonna be like my recommendation. Because <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Alyssa. Keep going. Please continue. Let me not have to think about this. <laughs> um, everything that's been read so far has been for the enjoyment of readers, but they aren't liking it anymore, so the world must end. The mayor, who is actually Geppetto, wants to end the series just full stop, but the book containing the fate of the world transforms into Chekhov's gun, which Velo shoots at the mayor. Velo doesn't want the series to end, so it doesn't really get an ending. It ends with the implication that more stories will be written at some point what a judo throw narrator they were not <laughs> <laughs> i loved it oh my god the way, like this is some stealth symphony shit david <laughs> yeah so if you want to see the absolute most insane ending this is very strong competition yeah we'll have to argue that at some point jordan when we have time i'm sure I some know, reader I know. some yeah. some listener is going to ask what had the crazier ending this uh so we'll save it for a chibi episode uh questionnaire it's really hard to top the ending of Stealth Symphony where you discover that the main character was uh, an unreliable narrator and everybody winds up in real life Japan. But this comes pretty fucking close. Yeah, it really does. <sighs> I feel like what they were trying to do was just like, all right, I have all these ideas for this Red Hood series that I'm doing. It's going to be great. It's going to take off. Everyone's going to love it. And then they were like, no, we're canceling you. They were like, well, I've got all these ideas. Let me just cram them all into the span of three chapters so everyone knows how good this would have been if it had the full amount of time <laughs> to tackle these crazy fourth wall breaking ideas. Oh, my God. There's like so much that I have to say about this. It's fucking insane. I, I'm just waiting for like we're doing a great job <sighs> of not derailing the plot section i know i know i know yeah <laughs> so let's try and be good and actually talk about it in an appropriate section <laughs> so speaking though of good boys jordan why don't you tell us about the main character the main character is velo or velo we've been calling him velo he is he's a boy and turns out that i guess he's pinocchio yep i guess he is because his father figure who created him who literally created him is geppetto <laughs> They point out a lot how it's like, oh, well, his whole thing is that he seems to make characters worse. <laughs> because, like, by hanging out with Grimm, and they say it in the series, like, directly in the fucking series, with because of her time with Velo, she has lost the depth of her character. It's amazing. I've never seen that before. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> Oh, God, yeah. Pretty much just kind of created in the equivalent of a lab just to be like, to, to make the plot work around him. He was created in a lab to be the perfect Shonen Jump protagonist. And they did it wrong, I guess. Oh, my God. This series is almost like a satire of manga at some points. Yeah. And we've read a lot of bad satire and this did a better job than some of those. Yeah. It's trying its heart out um, to varying levels of success. Yeah, I'll go next, because uh, I'll give you the, the honor of talking about Debonair. So Grim, she uh, looks like a little girl, but turns into a really thick woman. I forgot that the first ever panel of the series is her pouring water over herself. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. This series knew exactly what it was doing with this character. <laughs> Absolutely did, yeah. Good job, too, if I might, if I must say. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. damn. Do you think this guy's just going to be like the... <laughs> was it Bokusan where the guy quit and just started drawing porn? <laughs> Yes. I could see that future for him because he knows what he knows what people want. Yeah. I have something I want to request from his future um, that I will bring up <laughs> later, but I have I have needs from him. <laughs> <laughs> I have I also have many needs from him. <laughs> but you know who we need is <laughs> Alyssa, I'm well, giving you well, the let's, honor let's of talking. Talk a little bit more about Grimm, because there's a little bit more to her character. I What's mean there to say about her? That's the whole point is she has no characterization. Yeah, her character gets sucked out by Velo, so <laughs> Yeah. She gets the big suck. <laughs> I guess that's true. Yeah. She's a hunter and she, she is Grim of the Hundred Cannons. And that just means that she can pull out a bunch of guns from Hammer Space. That's basically mm -hmm. how she operates. Mm -hmm. 
And she has a magic tool that has 606 forms. Is it 600 or 616? Sorry, 616. Like the Marvel Universe. Like an area code. Might be close to me, actually. <laughs> that's, not a, that's not too different from... Your... <laughs> oh, thanks for doxing me, David. On the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> now everybody knows my area code. They're going to find me. Sorry, I give you the area code that three million people live in. <laughs> God. Said my full name on this pod, this episode and my area code. What's next? Just give him my fucking social security. <laughs> All right. So anyway, please tell us about Debonair Diamond. Debonair Diamond, who is hot, thick, muscle, and she's the whole package. I like Debonair because she her whole stick is that she's so hot that she actually literally becomes hot and turns into... <laughs> 6,000 degrees of temperature and can melt things because the author knew exactly what he was doing when he created Debonair. Absolutely. I was really disappointed there wasn't like a dude in like the burn ward and he was like fucking yeah. worth it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> the reason she's hot though, it, which is interesting, is that she was... Temperature wise. Yes. She's hot because, you know, great taste. But yeah. the heat she emits is created by a curse from a witch. So she is cursed to, like, have a superpower? Because I'm not really seeing, like, it's like, oh, the lowest temperature she could get is being 120 degrees, which isn't, like, that much hotter than humans. Like, it's, like, hot, but it's, like, you could still, like, hug people and, like, do normal human things. So I'm not... Yeah, she's not the human torch. Yeah. <laughs> they do say it took her an insanely long amount of training. Fair. You know, in Fire Punch, he eventually stops being on fire after like 15 years. And you're going to be like, oh, what was the downside of him being lit on fire his entire life? That's fair. All right, yeah. I'll give it to her. But yeah, Debonair is wonderful. Um, the best character. A whole lot of fun. Very fun personality. She has the longest character section in our notes. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Grimm is supposed to be the dual <laughs> protagonist. And we just. And her section consists of hot, thick muscle whole package. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. She also got an eye patch. That's pretty sick. Yeah. They never explain why she has an eye patch. Because it's cool. David, David, holy shit, this series has eye patches and it's about wolves and is it super? What? What? Really, David? Mm-mm. Like no. super eye Oh, that guy. Yeah, the YouTube guy. Yeah. The guy that David has a crush on, yeah. Aw. Yeah, that's true. I do want some by notice. <laughs> I thought you were going to talk about One Piece has yet to have a character with eye, an eye patch, despite it being about pirates. That's hilarious. I didn't even pick up on that until you just said that. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy until someone points it out and then you're like, oh, shit, because literally every character of one eye has their eye closed like Zoro. <laughs> I bet that Oda made that like a personal goal. It's like, look, I'm not going to just fucking do the obvious thing here, the lazy thing, and just have a bunch of dudes with eye patches. I'm going to make an active effort to ignore that. <laughs> I think he said he's saving it for a special occasion, if I recall. Patchy the pirate from Spongebob. <laughs> what devil fruit does he have, David? The uh, next, next fruit, where we're going to talk about the next character, so this recording doesn't yeah! last two hours. Yeah, so there's also just a fuck ton of side characters that show up, because he's like, oh, I'm going to just introduce 15 characters with powers, and I think that's fine for chapter 12 for a reader to take it in. Where again, we complained about how Monster Chamber Girl had six main characters over 10 chapters, and how that was excessive. You shouldn't be setting this shit up at this point. I, I would like to just read a story. Yeah. I'm getting, like, kneecapped at every end by the fact that I have to remember who this character that's appeared one time before means. But we'll talk about that more in the next section. I feel but. like there were some good highlights of those characters. If he just had more time. Like, so I liked Slime Time, like the guy who just uses, like, shrooms at people. He was cool. Love that guy. There was the thick, uh, religious woman. Yeah. That was a character. <laughs> and then there was the guy with the metal jaw. Oh, yeah, that guy. That guy's name was literally Bonkers. I hated Bonkers. I have a lot of thoughts towards Bonkers. Bonkers kind of sucks, yeah. Yeah, that's the how did this get me <laughs> representative, because they just always say Bonkers yeah. on that show. That's Jason Manzoukas. Oh, Bonkers sucks. Well, let's talk about Bonkers then. I mean, cool design. I like his jaw stuff. At first, I'm like, oh, this guy's going to be fun. He's just like a brick shithouse, like, dude, like, coming in to be, like, uh, just someone you kind of hate but kind of love just because he's just dumb and huge and punchy. But then he get like, there's this whole point in, like, the middle of this super weird rushed, cramped, like, too dense arc with the Hunter's Guild where he just dropped a tragic backstory that homeless people tried to steal from his rich family. And so they burned the homeless 
homeless guy, and it's sad because no one liked his family after they burned the homeless guy. <laughs> so that was like the lowest point in the entire series. And it was like, and then yeah, Mello's like agree. crying. He comes up, he's like, it's okay, Walkers. You can be a hunter. You don't have to not be a hunter because you were rich once and poor people tried to take from you. It's so terrible. Well, but that's not why he doesn't want to be a hunter, which is insane. He doesn't want to be a hunter because by taking the hunter exam and failing it at the last minute every single year, he gets free room and board on the fucking train. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> which is pretty great. I, I gotta admit, I, I did kind of like that. 500 <laughs> IQ move by that guy. Smartest dude in the series. Yeah. Uh, why don't we wrap things up with this section just so we can start diving into other things with talking about the big bad. So Jordan, do you want to tell us about Mr. Mayor? As they actually do call him Mr. Mayor several times in the series. Yeah, his name is Mayor Heck Horlock, aka literally Ludwig Geppetto from fucking Pinocchio. Yeah. <laughs> he is the big bad of the series, but I also feel like he's the author. Mm. Yep. He looks at the fucking camera. He looks at me and says, okay, it's time to end the series. He's like, honestly, man, I just want to end the fucking series. We don't need like a happy or tragic ending. Let's just kind of end it right now. It was so good. I was like, yes, this is the author. Let's go. <laughs> I loved when there, whenever there was a moment where I'm like, oh, this is just the author talking to me right now. Okay, cool. <laughs> the series starts by saying like a long time ago, there were dragons and stuff, but then we killed them all. And then there's a moment where the mayor basically turns to uh, Vela and was like, hey, you ever hear how there were like dragons and shit here? Well, that's something I wrote 500 years ago. <laughs> that's me, baby. That's why you think that. <laughs> I, I mean, at first I really liked the mayor. Ideal politician. So he's just some guy. He sold yeah. all his sheep and stuff so that his town could buy a hunter so that the people stop being eaten by werewolves. How a, a leader of a city should be. I had absolute yeah. respect yes. of this unit of a man. And he is a unit. I do want to point out one thing is who bought his house? Because they <laughs> then have to buy a house that's in a village that's actively being killed by werewolves. Oh, no, it's the universe uh -oh. that Ben Shapiro thinks we live in. <laughs> I was going to just say the Ben Shapiro, but we've... All right. Quick summary is Ben Shapiro said, why are you worried about rising water levels destroying your house? Just sell it to someone. <laughs> why are you worried about werewolves? Just sell your house and... <laughs> Legally, werewolves cannot eat you if you do not consent. <laughs> Just say no. Yeah. Really, you think about it, it's your fault if you get eaten. <laughs> so, Jordan, though, speaking of things that are failures, but much unlike yourself, what are some things that stood Aww. out to you as failures in this series? I think that was a compliment anyway. It was supposed to be, but honestly, I'm not really sure if it was. We'll consult the tapes later. <laughs> The big issue with this series, so in the first few chapters, it establishes, like, a story structure that could be continued, you know, where, like, Grimm and Velo are, are, like, hanging out together and interacting with each other, and then a werewolf comes to the village and attacks and stuff, and then some other stuff. But then, they burn the village to the ground, and all of a sudden, Velo is separated from Grimm, and we get, like, 20 new characters, and I don't really care about any of them. Mm -hmm. And the author has to introduce all of them super fucking fast to the point where like we don't get like any sense for who these characters are. These characters could all be could all have been done very well. Yeah. There are some characters that I am genuinely interested in, but it's just like he doesn't have the time and it just completely just ruins any sense of connection that I have with these just random dudes on the fucking Hunter 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 exam. <laughs> I feel like it was unearned character arcs. He was going through these like yeah. full arcs of character backstory redemption for characters you've known for like four pages and they so they drop yeah. some backstory on you and then like the main characters crying and there's like all this like dramatic like screaming at the camera and like sobbing and I'm like he's just trying really hard to like make you feel for these characters without earning it and giving you any sort of build up to it. Don't even give background on probably the character I most would have wanted to know the background on is Debonair. Yeah. Oh, I don't know how many chapters this arc lasts, but it's like the longest arc in the series, and it really shouldn't be. It's like anywhere from like seven to ten chapters, mm -hmm. and like a significant portion of that is just them hashing out this dumbass plan that doesn't make sense and I don't care about. I don't give a fuck about this cops and robbers game at all. 
Just like, oh my God, can we move on to the next thing? Why is this still happening? I like, who could care about this? But the other thing I noticed that this author does, which was a real problem, is that he will have something happen, then have a flashback explaining why it was cool that that happened and why we should care. He also does really poor flashbacks where he just like, he shows yeah. a page, like a full page of uh, what happened like a few pages ago or like a, a conversation ago and just kind of slaps it behind a camera and you can't tell what's going on back there it's so weird i remember in like the fourth chapter they show him like on the the fucking carriage and they have a flashback to her explaining why they got on the carriage and just showing them get on the carriage <laughs> why was that a flashback it was it i just oh my god a lot of this uh like order of operations and shit is a real problem in this series mm -hmm. We've definitely read series where in the first chapter it has a flashback, like Bokusan has a flashback in the first chapter instead of just starting at the flashback. You can do a flashback. Like, there are ways to do it that don't suck. Like, I mean, it's a very common thing to use in yeah. manga, you know? But, like, the way that they're used here, it's just, like, you could have condensed all the flashbacks into, like, one scene, especially during that during that exam arc. Like, you can't call your series Hunter's Guild and then have the Hunter Hunter exam. Like, come <laughs> on. Are you fucking kidding me? But also, what Hunter Hunter does that this series fucks up so bad is Hunter Hunter will have long periods of characters plotting out a strategy, and then you see the strategy take place. Now, this author didn't have the time to do that, which is why he shouldn't have done it. See, what this author to me feels like is that they're a, a creator who consumes a lot of shonen manga, like shonen media, rather than kind of like... I don't know, taking from experiences they have or like other kind of sources of like storytelling. And so you're getting a lot of these just like trope after trope or like arc after arc that just it's like just pulling from a lot of different other kinds of uh, like, like you said, like the Hunter arc definitely just feels like he's just like cramming in what he thinks Shonen should have and do. I think a part of it is his mentorship. So to be completely honest, listen, the first two series that the guy who made My Hero Academia, Barrage, and Ozu. We're trash. We're fucking we're trash. pretty shit. Mm. <laughs> and this dude just got lucky that he figured out the one topic his like style worked yeah. for. So I would be wary that this dude got mentorship from someone who really would n likewise not have been able to make this idea work. <laughs> Interesting. Uh... So I think that's a big thing is he tried to emulate the My Hero Academia style, yeah. but he didn't realize why people like it because My Hero Academia has a shitload of characters with unique powers, yeah. lots of thick women, <laughs> you know, starts with an exam. It's literally the same thing, but he didn't realize that people like superheroes that much because you don't have to explain a lot of pieces that needed to be explained in the series, which took up, which yeah. makes everything feel like it dragged on forever. If you have a cape and you can fly, people know you're a superhero. Yeah. You don't have to fucking explain to me what that means. He shouldn't need to explain anything. Everyone kind of knows, like, Red Riding Hood. He's pulling tropes from old stories that, like, I feel like are super popular. Well, here's the thing is we don't know that from a Japanese lens. Mm, but are superheroes either, though? Yeah, Marvel's huge. Okay. Yeah. To be honest, I kind of wish that he wouldn't explain the amount of stuff that he explains. Like, I feel like when he explains things, that's when the whole series falls apart. Yeah. The licensing arc, which we, we keep mentioning because it is e easily the worst and most frustrating part of the series. Well, that series of chapters just keeps getting fucked over because he has to take a break to tell you what just <laughs> happened so that you can follow it. Mm hmm. And, you know, Candy Flurry had this issue, too. There's like this mentality that, all right, guys, now we got to do the fucking exam license par arc or whatever. And just like the exam arc is the new tor tournament arc, basically. I can see that. He's just trying to pull off some things that are kind of like over his head, I think. And I think he just needs to like mm -hmm. practice some of these like storytelling tools before he gets into like because there's arts to show up. I'm like, why are, why are you pulling in art? Like, just focus in one direction, keep it simple, and then kind of build your ideas from there rather than trying to shove in these, like, high concept ideas right at the beginning with no kind of, like, y y like not kind of, like, studying it or understanding how you're using it in this story. So, yeah, so now that we've really gone into a lot of the negatives, let's try and actually go into the puzzles because there still are a lot of really great elements about the series. This is really the episode with a lot of dualities, how I'm going to start and end it. And likewise, Jordan, you've told us about the bad. Now let's tell us about the good besides the thickness. You know, that's <laughs> universal. 
Well, I'm gonna talk about the thickness because the art kicks ass in this series. <laughs> it does. I fucking love it. It isn't just about the fact that like, oh man, he drew like these thick, busty, like curvy women. I mean, it's a little about that, but it's how he does it, which is like his art has this solidity to mm -hmm. it. Really, when I see that, it like separates like, okay, this is like a manga artist and oh, this guy's just an artist. The way in which these bodies are like constructed and shaded, it really just gives you a sense of, no, there is muscle and there is like bone underneath mm -hmm. the skin of these people. And it's, it's really well done. Yeah. He's also very good at like dynamic shots too. There's like some really cool moments where like like the one off the top of my head is when Velo like cuts open the granny wolf with like the axe. I thought that looked really cool. Yeah, the art was fantastic. There's a lot of really great uses of scale. Yeah. Like there's that moment with like the giant tree guy that they are they're in the like crab cart. Oh yeah. There's a lot of potential for really cool like world building and like having these kind of like moments of just like you can just like step back, see these like grand things that might exist in this like fantasy kind of like Tim Burtony world. And I think <laughs> if he I wish you know he had focused on that a little bit more because there's some like really gorgeous like shots in that um in in those areas. God, yeah, this dude can fucking do a two-page spread. Yeah. Like that yeah. explosion scene or the bell in the second chapter. Art is not the issue, which actually I think ironically comes to an issue where I think the big problem is, is this art is so high effort. I think he struggled to have the time to actually write the plot and think about the art elements. Mm -hmm. If this guy worked with a writer, I think that would be the ideal situation. The other thing about this series and like what it did well, I really liked I really liked those first few chapters. Mm -hmm. Those first two chapters really sets up the story as this kind of like fun romp of like themed on uh, this Red Riding Hood uh, story where you've got these like the wolves that are like not these typical like werewolf creatures. They're a lot more like fun and whimsical. Mm -hmm. And I really think that there's a lot of potential for camp. He really like had something with those first two chapters and just like keeping the scale, the scope of this like story a little bit smaller, just focusing on like a couple characters and like kind of giving Grimm more for us to you on um because grim is like a like it's like there she's a fun character like i want her to have a uh, personality and like something going for her um because that's such like a fun reveal where she just turns like super like rip torn muscle guns and it's <laughs> it's so good okay yes the women are really are like drawn really hot but they're yeah. also strong as fuck like debonair will fuck you up grim will fuck you mm -hmm. up and it is kind of refreshing for the normal kind of sexiness you get in Shonen Jump. Yeah. It's like Mikasa, where, uh, if I'm saying that, from, from um, Attack on Titan, where she actually looks like someone who is a professional soldier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but Grimm is way thicker than Mikasa. Mikasa is more of a gymnast, where you couldn't have a build like Debonair mm. with the kind, like, that would be very detrimental That's to the That's true. Mm, yeah. Well, well, you couldn't <laughs> and still make it hot for Shonen Jump readers. <laughs> Now we know what Jordan's into. That's good to know. <laughs> no, I'm just saying what Shonen Jump readers are into. <laughs> I also think that the the werewolves themselves, like, it's interesting how it was this kind of eldritch body horror element. Oh, yeah, I love that. Yeah. And I do like how it was very, like, John Carpenter, the thing inspired with how the wolves infiltrated people and they mutated and they had these interesting, like, crazy forms. And it just was a really cool element, but it's a shame it never shows up after the first arc. It had such a good setup and then just like ignored it, mm -hmm. which reminds me like we do have have to talk about the ending because I do think there were a lot of aspects oh, of the ending crazy. that I fucking loved. OK, yeah, this was amazing to read in real time, by the way, <laughs> because it was just like there was a moment where you were like, oh, shit, this guy's just like screaming at his editors here. This rules. <laughs> I think Victor was like the last chapter is going to just be blank. <laughs> I also did like the moment where it was like um, they meet this one dude who's like writing the book while they're talking to him. And he's just like, yeah, so we actually have to rely on uh, our gods, which are readers. We call them <laughs> readers. You see? Yep. If they don't like this series, we're all going to die, basically. <laughs> And then another guy was like, yeah, it's a shame. Uh, the next scenario we were going to go with, we were going to make the werewolf stuff into a uh, into a virus. But damn, mm, that's where we were headed. My by brain the way. was turning yeah. into pudding as I was reading this. I was like, <laughs> I've read this twice and I still was like, what the fuck is going on? And I just gave up. And I was like, Jordan will figure out what happens at the end. 
I loved it. I know you did. Oh, you're so ridiculous. I was just like, oh, fuck yeah, dude, go in. Fucking tear these guys apart. <laughs> I think, though, as our readers, why don't we though, talk about, as much as we loved it, some things that we really wish it could have done different, and maybe we wouldn't have had to have had this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Alyssa, why don't you do us the honor of really telling us what is something you really think the series could have done differently that, I, I don't even know what to say. Yeah, what's something you think the series could have done differently? Yeah, <laughs> so I think I'm, this I'm really out of it, I guess. I feel like he needs to know his focus, the things that he likes and the things that he wants to do and just kind of sit in that and like and discover the world that because it's a cool world. Like he he could have just like let us do maybe some more like werewolf hunts and you could like maybe meet characters along the way as you're going on these werewolf hunts. Maybe instead of taking like a train to the hunter arc, they could have like traveled there by like foot or like a couple of different carts or something and like kind of met people along the way. So that way when these characters are interested you're kind of like slowly like finding out about them you're finding out about the world there's moments where you can kind of like dive into like how this world works and see more of these like fun like tim burton like designs and um rather than kind of like being stuck in a box (laughs) um midway through none of these characters outright look like shit yeah like they all seem like they could be genuinely good characters but I can't focus on all of them at once. Exactly. What this story is doing, and I don't know if you've read uh, or watched uh, Princess Tutu. No, I haven't. So Princess Tutu is extremely similar in what it does with the fourth wall breaking. There's a character basically exactly like Geppetto in this, where they're like the storyteller and they're telling the story. But the way that it's presented is a lot more like clean. It's like earning it. And you're like seeing these characters kind of tackle like how we fight with like the writer of the story and how we kind of because it's it's all it's also based on fan like a fairy tales. It really seems that this character, this creator either was influenced by Princess Tutu or just it's I don't know got really lucky and being really similar in that case like the problem (laughs) with this is that they're trying to do this fourth wall breaking without really creating the world to break the wall yeah you gotta set it up before you knock it down there's just so little setup and I wish it just like focus more on like just get rid of Velo as a character cut Velo out Grim and Debonair right that's your whole fucking series right there the quickest change I could make to this series just to make it instantly better so here's what I'm thinking he gets on the train time skip three months we're done Uh over he's a hunter don't fucking worry about Mm -hmm. it now him and Grim can go back to participating in the actual manga that we're reading okay cool this series didn't have a time skip yeah that's true (laughs) that's so weird (laughs) Yeah, that's a great idea, I think, skipping it. Another idea I had was, like, it would have been great if they just had an arc. Like, I always think one of the best things Naruto ever did was they had the Land of Waves arc before the Chunin exam. Mm-hmm. And so they could have just had an arc where they just go on a normal ass mission. Maybe those two wolves, instead of attacking the town, she's like, there was a sign of more wolves. We got to go hunt them down. And it's like, you know, they spend two or three chapters literally infiltrating where the wolves live and killing them and making, like, a plan of, like, when you're on the offense, what's it like to be a hunter instead of being on the defense? Yeah. The two wolves, that was really pointless. I get that it was to destroy the town, but that was, again, the offer overselling things. He didn't need to physically destroy the hamlet to make the character want to leave. Yeah. I didn't want them to leave the fucking village. What if they just stayed in the goddamn village? They already set up a thing where once you kill a werewolf, other werewolves come and try and take its place because they're territorial. You created a mechanism through which you will keep having new bad guys come to take take you down. And then they could just be like, yeah, I called up help from the Hunter's Guild or whatever. And then a new character shows up and then they join the town to help. And now you're slowly building up a roster of characters mm-hmm. and getting to know the people in the this little hamlet. And you can build up the hamlet too. Exactly. That would be cool. And they have to like build up this base. Damn. You ever see Tremors? Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like that where like the whole town just gets together and tries to help itself like. Oh yeah. That would be fun. Yeah, it would be fun. <laughs> but you know what else is fun? <laughs> what? <laughs> Talking about our miscellaneous thoughts. <laughs> well, listen, I'm excited about what you've got to say because it's usually actually pretty rare that um one of the guests really has a miscellaneous thought they want to talk about. So you set the bar really high, so lay it on us. <laughs> I want this artist to create a Dirty Pair style women's wrestler comic where two characters 
in the similar <laughs> vein of Grimm and uh, Debonair, they just go on admissions and adventures and do cool stuff. And sure, you can make it fantasy if you want. I don't care. But you obviously know what you want. You know what we like. This is what everyone yeah. everyone sees Red Hood and they're like, yes, that thick brick shit house Grimm Riding Hood. Amazing, stunning, spectacular. Let's do that. Kill it. Like he, he would be like king of manga. <laughs> Especially yes. now. Yeah. I feel like he there's would. A neat, there's this like trend towards these like tough like like muscular women style characters. Especially you see like like Noi from uh, like Doro yeah, no way rules. And like really up the camp. Like this comic had a lot of camp going for it. I like camp, but I think it tried to be too serious and therefore like kind of like ruins the camp of it. So cool. It was just like Red Riding Hood, but she's like going around like punching people and then her <laughs> homie like Devon Air comes up, starts punching people and they're just like <laughs> beating these wolves. That would be hilarious, fun. Like you, the characters are fun. You'd love like to see these like goofy, like like straight man kind of funny man that they would have like a dynamic kind of thing. Like it it would just be a good time and that's what i want from red hood and i this artist <laughs> especially if they were both like wrestlers dude just oh my god just make a female wrestling manga are you fucking kidding me it could be mud wrestling he's really good at drawing that, as we saw <laughs> <laughs> also do want to talk about the wolfonium i hate that name wolfonium is stupid so they're like oh it's not silver and i'm like oh ooh, it's not silver so what kind of stone is it i'm thinking like okay it's gotta be platinum that would be cool <laughs> what a twist platinum because it's like extra, it's like super silver right and then they just make up this stupid wolfonium <laughs> like at least come up with a better name not just like <laughs> so great. well yeah and that's the main thing i was gonna get into is there's already a material that is named after wolves. Here we go. Tungsten, which is a major component of wolframite, which guess what? It's well known for being is being really heavy, which they say is the problem with silver is silver isn't dense enough. The actual element already fucking exists. That's why tungsten <laughs> is W on the periodic table because it's for wolframite. You were so close. Reading that again today, I, when I got to Wolfonium, I was like, is this, is this like an intentional joke? <laughs> like, Did you miss the point on purpose? <laughs> yeah, I do also want to say something. So we did a series a little while ago called I Tell C, which me and David are very divided upon. But at the very end, something happens where it has two female characters kiss each other and Shonen Jump like censors it because like it's a well-known thing. Shonen Jump does not like depicting girls kissing each other or I mean, I'm sure they don't like men kissing each other either. But there was a moment in like literally the last fucking chapter of this series. Yeah. Where Debonair is like, walks over to Cinderella and is like, hold on one sec. And he, she picks her up <laughs> and we hear smooch, we see smooching <laughs> sound effects. And then she's just like, why'd you do that? And she's like, oh, I just did that because I knew it was something that you wouldn't like. And I read that and I was yeah. like, oh, that's him talking to the editors. <laughs> He's like, I did this because I knew you wouldn't like that. Those last three chapters are so bitter. <laughs> They're so bitter. I love it. As far as I remember, they give you three chapters to end your story when they say you're canceled. And so that was the point when he was like, okay, fuck you guys. Like, this is what I wanted to do. I'm just going to put it all in here. Also, I'm going to talk about like narrative and it's just me talking to you, the reader, and also just doing a bunch of shit for like Shonen, like talking about like Shonen and narrative and all this stuff. So it's like, I think he's aware of some of these tropes and things that he is trying to and working with. Like, maybe this is a problem where this author had like a really bad editor who was like making making him do a bunch of stuff that like yeah. wasn't fun like wasn't what he wanted to do what if like the reason why there's so many exam arcs is because the editors keep pushing them to make exam arcs but it is a very low-hanging fruit i mean the way this bitterness feels i i would not be surprised at all if like a lot of the choices about red hood that made red hood not work were from um editorial or shonen jump politics because i it does seem like you know there's so much inspiration in this artist and like this artist wants to do a lot of unique things but they're trying to like there's a lot of these weird like super shonen -y things that show up that are kind of in dissonance with what he was already doing or what made it unique so i can totally see like a lot of the choices and a lot of the things that he writes as being like you're a puppet for the like system to change the world into what you don't want to do <laughs> if you just read that those last three chapters as him just like telling everyone why his life is it's like a call for help yeah i can see that as just like a direct like this is what happened to me why red hood turned out this way he literally has debonair turn to grim and say hey you your character sucks now what the fuck yep 
Alyssa, you'd really enjoy reading Time Paradox Ghost Rider, which is literally about this topic. Oh, okay, wonderful. <laughs> yeah. But unfortunately, we don't have time to really go into it, but that's probably our favorite series so far. So one last thing I just wanted to say was just a quick joke where I was thinking about all of the tools in the Hunter's Kit, and it made me think of Bone Collection, Jordan. Uh, Imagine if like one of the devices was a Nintendo Witch, because remember how they had the Vich? <laughs> <laughs> As we round things up, why don't we go to the final verk where we can really just kind of say ultimately what we thought of this series. Let me start with some of our awesome fan written uh, six word summaries. No surprise, we had a shitload of them. So first one from Tucker. Art is cool when it is discernible. He had a second one that... <laughs> I don't want to read, so you can ask him what it was. <laughs> then we had <laughs> from Hassan, I'm stuck big <laughs> bad wolf Oni Chan. <laughs> from Chemi Chems, thick women but not thick story. Mm. T. Wolfwood, who's listening to this recording right now. Debonair's awesome. Plot details into uniqueness. Albie, bonk, go to horny jail, y'all. <laughs> Who is also listening, so thank you for submitting that. Kirby Mon, execution should have involved more executing. Agpa said, huff, huffed, puffed, and blew the pacing. Nice. Zylon said, once upon a time, thick women. The final one from our listeners, the laughing fool. Kate can't save your thin premise. <laughs> This is a really, really great episode for fan ones. If I don't think anything's topped the record where Candy Flurry, we had like nine, but <laughs> these were really fantastic. And yeah, if people want to submit theirs, we're always taking them. Uh, just feel free to join the Discord and then I'll say, hey, this is what we're reading and then just send it to me and it's awesome. I really appreciate everyone's been writing such terrific ones. But Jordan, why don't you read off yours to us? Fourth wall can't contain that ass. <laughs> oh, fuck, that's really good. <laughs> How about you, Alyssa? Yuki, make a woman's wrestler comic. <laughs> That's good. Mine was plot that gets stuck in oatmeal. <laughs> That's a good one. I was proud of that one, so I'm glad you guys liked it. Next up, flop or not. So I, I'll say this is the worst series I would consider not a flop we've read. Yeah. I read it in real time and I didn't drop it. Unlike Zipman, which I did drop. It's right on that line, man. It's just like, um... Secure, uh, uh, fuck, Matama security, where it's just like, you really gotta make a judgment call if it was a flop or not. I really respect this author got super bitter towards the end. I thought that was really awesome. So I'm uh, basing on that. I'm going to say it's not a flop. Okay. Okay. I think at the very least, you should check out the last three chapters of this series because it's something I've never seen in Shonen Jump before. I can tell you that. I, I thought you were going to say I can't not respect that ass. <laughs> Well, I think I've made it pretty clear I can't not respect that ass. <laughs> so, so, Alyssa, how about you? Was this a flop I or not? I would agree that it is a difficult choice to make. But when I like sit back and think about, you know, what it means to be a flop, think that it's a flop that you should read. Like, there's nothing wrong <laughs> with being a flop. You can be a flop. We're having a good time flopping. Yeah. <laughs> We're flippity floppity. Flopping all around here. Yeah. So, though that means that, let's see, you have the unique thing of saying, what should someone check out instead of- well, I know you already <laughs> told people. I know you said, oh, <laughs> instead of reading Ro <laughs> Red Hood, read Red Hood. If you liked Red Hood, I, you know, you should read Red Hood. It's good time. But if you actually want to read something that's good <laughs> and, like, will keep your attention for a while, I think you've got two choices and you can watch these both simultaneously and get essentially what would be the experience of what Red Hood wanted to be from watching um, Princess Tutu um, or reading Doro Hedoro. Because then you've got all the fun, like, imagery of Red Hood Hood from Dora Hedero and a lot of like the grunge that really makes Red Hood's like visuals pop and like the fantasy aspect. But if you want that like fourth wall breaking like fan like fairy tale kind of bit, but with like a twist um, idea, Princess Tutu is going to hook you up. It's an all time classic. I've heard about it in passing, but now I'll definitely have to check it out. Also, I will say, I know I said it wasn't a flop, but like, if you're interested in reading a uh, better series that handles the this fourth wall shit in an amazing way, God, just really just read Grant Morrison's Animal Man Run. It's the first thing I thought of when this series just started doing that. I 100% that's what I was going to agree if it was a flop. So that's why Jordan's my co-host, because <laughs> we both have the same idea sometimes, which is great. We finish each other's mm -hmm. sandwiches. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I miss Arrested Development when it was good. <laughs> <laughs> and so final question, though, for you, Jordan, is so is this the best thing we've ever read? No, no. <laughs> Definitely read Time Paradox Ghost Rider. Alyssa, if you ever want to check out a series that that was probably the biggest like hidden gem we've ever discovered from the show. Yeah. Along with probably Mora King is number two. Yeah, I, I would agree Shit. with that. 
Now that we have given our final thoughts, why don't we wrap things up with our shout outs where we can hear really a lot more about what awesome work Alyssa has been doing. Props to Jordan for making the opening and ending theme, being a great co-host and helping with the editing. Props to Mer Lyle for awesome cover art. You can find her online at Lyle Mer. That's L-I-E-L underscore M-E-R. She is our new artist. She's doing some awesome work. So as much as we miss Shannon, you know, she got busy with school, but she did some absolutely fantastic. She might have one more piece of art for us. Fingers crossed. Uh, we'll see how that goes. And I also want to give thanks to Nigel for being our generous art benefactor. I also want to give thanks to Tucker, who's listening to this recording right now. So he knows for sure that we're crediting him in the recording for his awesome help with pronunciation, translation, other miscellaneous research. And I also want to give a thanks to Nicole for helping with social media and a thanks to Luke for being our community producer. He runs our book club. He comes up with a lot of really great community nights. And really, we wouldn't have had such a terrific and welcoming discord community without all of his hard work. And uh, how about you, Jordan? I would like to give thanks to uh, to David on oh, this week you. of Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm thankful for you, buddy. <laughs> and I hope that you eat a turkey and it's good. Oh, man. I just hope that turkey is as jive as you. Oh, hey. okay. Cool. <laughs> All right. No, and, and thank Jordan. you, and thank you so much, Alyssa, for being on. You were a real. You've been a really great guest. Oh yeah, thank thanks you for, for having me. It was a great time. Though, Alyssa, where can they find you? So you guys can find me on Twitter or Instagram at Solitaire, um, S A L L A T A I R E, or you can just Google search my name um, because I'm like the only Alyssa Sol <laughs> around. Um, you can also <laughs> find me. Um, I uh, find me with my new book, uh, Weeaboo. Um, so you just like search Weeaboo graphic novel. I, I mean, theoretically, that should get it. Um, it's a book from Oni Press. Uh, just came out um, this week. So well, I guess last week. It's a like a young adult story um, coming of age about three weebs kind of finding out the difference between reality and fantasy and how friendship is a lot more complicated than a story in a book or a fairy tale. Um, very similar, you know, it's, Red Hood has a lot of similarities. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's really awesome. I'll have to talk with Luke and maybe we'll be able to do it for book clubs sometime. And if you want we to to talk, to join us for that conversation, we actually almost had Casey Green join when we did the graveyard book. And oh then he God. said, I don't do that. Love and so, Casey Green's The Anime Club is one of the best amazing. comedy comics ever made. I was going to ask if that was an influence on your, your book. Kind of. Oh, I, so the good. Anime Club is a little bit more um, like comedy than I think I was going a little bit more sincere than the Anime Club, but Anime Club is a great yeah. time. <laughs> awesome. And then uh, you know what else is a great time? The Show to Flop Discord! <laughs> Yeah, come hang out with us and talk about anime, games, or whatever else is on your mind. As we talked about, we got Book Club and regular movie nights. Our next one is Die Hard. I think it'll be coming out, this episode come out like two days before that, so be sure to join us. Uh, We have monthly polls. I'm really excited for January where I keep talking about we're going to watch Dread 3D, and I think it's finally going to happen. That's right, listener. We are cliche enough to fucking watch Die Hard (laughs) during Christmas. Yes, it was was Die Hard versus Gremlins for what Christmas movie we watched. And you can find a link to it in our show notes. I also want to say if you've been enjoying the podcast and want to help us keep going, consider subscribing to our Patreon. We have a ton of awesome perks ranging from exclusive mini episodes, deleted scenes, and you can even help us pick what series we cover next. Find it at patreon.com slash shonenflop. On that note, I'm going to give a shout out to Paradactyl Ghost for being a Chainsaw Man patron. And T. Wolfwood, Marty, The BB King, BBB The, Gabe, <laughs> Mark, Overrated, Apples, Matt, and Albie for being King of the Forest. <laughs> And if you're not ready for a regular commitment, consider buying some merch. We have a ton of awesome designs, ranging from the much-requested Gomez Moon and Mashal Punching Harry Potter shirts, and even the cover art for this episode. It'll be the first uh, piece of merch by our new artist, so that's really exciting if we can get some people, uh, you know, being on fleek or whatever the kids say <laughs> these days. It's a collector's item, you know? Yeah, it's a collector's item, yes. Um, but no worries if you can't help the show out financially. If you could like, rate, review, or just tell a friend about the show, it really means a lot just introducing the show to your friends. You can find us on Twitter at Shonen and Flopcast and our website shonenflop.com. We're also on Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, or wherever else you get your podcast. Now I just want to play a promo here, depending on how many promos I end up getting. That's, you know, don't have to make any new audio. It's a 500 IQ editing move <laughs> right there, yeah. David. You're just so smart. <laughs> and you're definitely not the reason why your sister, your grandma doesn't talk to you anymore. Um, all right, so... <laughs> Do you like anime? Do you want to get into anime? Do you want to know what's going on in the world of anime? If you answered yes to any of these questions, then you should come check out the Sipping for Senpai podcast. We like to talk about a bunch of animes, also try to get all our, the newer viewers into anime, read manga, and also try to spring our addiction of waifus. But if you want to simp, simp for us at the Sipping for Senpai podcast. We're available in a majority of your podcast apps. 
Hey, do you like football? Wait, wait, don't hit that skip button. What about manga? What about a sports manga written and illustrated by two pillars of recent weekly shown in Jump? In that case, come listen to Deal with the Devils and join hosts Derek and James along with a revolving cast of guests as we cover Riichu Inagaki and Yusuke Murata's Aisho 21 volume by volume. Find the show at anchor.fm forward slash devilbatpod and on Twitter at devilbatpod. Yaha! Yaha! Yeah! <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us. This has been David. This has been Jordan. And this has been Alyssa. And you've been listening to Shonen Flop. Keep on flapping, flappers. Yeah!